Hey folks, welcome to Market Intraday Analysis by InTheMoneyStocks.com, your leaders in pure technical analysis, avoiding all that Wall Street hype. Today, Thursday, July 16th, 2009. Well, we're seeing a muted day on Wall Street today, folks. Very, very muted as the markets consolidate off yesterday's move. The Dow is down about five points on the day. S&P 500 down about two points. And the NASDAQ is hovering up slightly on the day, two and a half points or so ahead of Google and IBM earnings today for technology. Now, the key here is this, guys. What happened today? What's causing this kind of consolidation move? First of all, you have to realize, and those of you that follow these intraday videos, fantastic. Those of you that are part of the Research Center, the growing number, and by the way, I want to welcome all of you informed investors that have joined us in the last few weeks and the last couple days. What I want to say, number one, is that you basically saw the monster of all monster rallies yesterday. Whenever you get that monster rally, we always talk about a consolidation day following. That's what the odds will favor. Now, it may not be a huge favor, but it's usually like a 60-70% favor to that. And Monday was a big rally. Tuesday, we paused. Wednesday, big rally. Thursday, pause. Notice what's going on here and understand it. You're getting a big move like we got yesterday, up 3% across the board on the indexes, and then you're getting a little bit of a pause day. And that's exactly what you have to remember going forward whenever you have a monster day, especially in the summer months. I can't stress that enough as the summer months have very, very light volume to them. So in general, you will see that and it's very, very common. All right, so number one, let's talk a little about what we saw this morning with J.P. Morgan's earnings. Now, J.P. Morgan's earnings were much like Goldman Sachs. They blew estimates away. However, the previous day or days on Goldman Sachs, uh, the stock, we saw a major, major rocket ship, again, off the Meredith Whitney call and so forth. And basically what that did was it factored in the beat on earnings. All right, Meredith Whitney came out Monday morning, said that Goldman Sachs was going to blow away estimates. Sure enough, they did, but the stock had already gone up $8 on the Meredith Whitney call on Monday. So on Tuesday, you saw a pause in the Goldman Sachs chart. On Wednesday, guess what? Yesterday, another big day for the markets. JP Morgan had a monstrous day. I'll show it up here. You can see JP Morgan all the way up here. In fact, JP Morgan over the last five trading days has had a monster move, and I'll show you that on the 60 minute as well. So basically, JP Morgan from basically $32 all the way up to a high yesterday of 36 to 37 had already factored in the earnings beat today. And you can see that precisely in how they blew away estimates, but the stock is actually down slightly on the day, down about 45 cents. Now, that also combines into the fact that those earnings were not as rosy as the headline number gave us or made people think. Any amateur investors out there that don't really read into this stuff are going to think, wow, they beat earnings by a few hundred percent. I think they were expecting four or whatever cents, eight cents. They came in at like 20 24 or something like that. It was a really unbelievable earnings and beat. But the fact of the matter is, if you look closely at their numbers, they're not really that good. A lot of write offs, uh, credit card defaults, not pretty at all. The debt there, again, a lot of these facets of the underlying number are uh, very, very ugly. Now, a lot of the gains came from the uh, investment banking area, which again is always hot when people are raising debt and this kind of stuff. They're going to be making a lot of money there. That's basically what Meredith Whitney had said on Monday, which we happen to agree with and had been calling for. Now, again, obviously we called the move up that we've seen. Now, again, the question is, are we pausing here to continue up or are we going to actually start to move back lower? And those of you that joined yesterday and the day before and the previous days, obviously in the research center, we enlighten you guys on all of that, all those major calls and continue to do so. So I do, again, thank you for joining. We'd love to have you with us. We're going to continue to give you guys the best guidance out there in our opinions, best guidance bar none in the research center, in the chat room, in the webinars that we do. You can check us out at InTheMoneyStocks.com. The research center includes everything underneath it, probably the best value out there by about 10 times in our opinion. Okay, again, the JP Morgan move, beautiful move up. You're seeing the pause now. That's basically creating the pause on Wall Street. We're going to go back to the spiders here on the intraday 10 minute. This is the intraday SPY chart We're using a 10 minute candle. All right, now you can see all the levels are labeled here with a line. So these are your major levels. The, one that are, the ones that are thick lines are the ones that are very, very important or very, very heavy resistance or support. All right, as you can see on the upside, you had yesterday's highs at right around 93.50. Those highs were key. We talked about that today when we ran up into it. That would be resistance. Sure enough, the market pulled off beautifully off of that as it was a great scalp for those of you that trade intraday. A lot of you guys trade over a daily or weekly or monthly chart, which is great. I'm encouraging you that. Use your time frame analysis. Use the stuff we teach. The one thing I would say, everything that I show you on these charts and these videos, then the nightly videos in the Research Center and our, at InTheMoneyStocks.com, that's all can be applied to the weekly, the monthly, the daily charts exactly the same way. And that's why I use these videos to show you 
you guys a little bit of our intraday calls and how accurate we are in hopes that you join us, obviously, and really get the bigger time frame calls on the markets. You know, when we can call Friday that a move up is coming and the market goes up 7% in a matter of three days, that's what we're talking about, these type of calls. And you definitely want to be a part of that. Now, just looking at this chart, you have resistance here on the intraday level at 93.50. We haven't been able to break through. Look, you tested it once today, pulled back. Tested it twice, pulled back. Now, you haven't been able to really test it up here yet. You didn't touch it. You came up just above the 20 moving average and then pulled back into the 50 moving average right here. This is the 50 moving average sloping up. You can see we're resting right on there. Look at the volume today. You can see the middle portion of the day has no volume behind it. Much, much lighter in volume than yesterday as really the JP Morgan earnings had already been factored in the stock. We had job claims today. By the way, those jobless claims came in in the low 500 thousands. Most amateurs and unknowing traders are going to say, wow, that's a good number. That's not true, folks. There's a pers personal or there's a touch here that you have to understand. I have to express this to you. Really what you're seeing with those jobless claims numbers, and this is again very, very key, is that there's a normal um, input of a declining number there based on usual automotive layoffs year after year during these this portion of the summer. So there's factored in that there should be an extra portion. That's some Attracted out of it, so actually this number probably undershoots it by a good fifty to one hundred thousand, in my opinion. That's just my guess, folks. At least that you're probably looking at five fifty to six hundred thousand if this number wasn't factored in. So please understand that you can go do your research on it and find out exactly what I'm talking about. But there's a little disparity there because it's already factored in based on a certain amount of. Uh, automotive losses. Now, th all those automotive losses have already been taken. They're not being taken really now, and that's the bottom line. So you're getting basically they're subtracting off that l number, probably fifty to one hundred thousand jobs, and obviously getting a five hundred twenty-five number that would have really been six twenty-five or five seventy-five if that had been not negated there or not taken out. So please, you can a fascinating thing to understand. And starting next week, we should go back to a more normal number, and I do expect jobless claims to be back down to the five fifty to six twenty-five range next week. Okay, having said that, let's talk about this level. Right now, you have a minorly bearish pattern developing here. Look at the down move and sideways to up. That's bearish consolidation. However, what I want to make clear about this, guys, that does not mean you're going to fall today. And I want to make this clear. There's no volume in this market. This market is on pause. Paulson was testifying. You're waiting to Goldman Sachs has earnings after the bell. Excuse me, not Goldman Sachs. Google has earnings after the bell. Uh, IBM has earnings after the bell. These stocks, the market's on pause for. They're going to be huge, especially Google. All right, you're either going to see technology get slapped tomorrow or rally big time tomorrow, and that's what the market seems to be on pause for. So believe it or not, and I told this to the chat room today, there was only one good trade that I called out in the chat room. Other than that, I said, guys, sit on your hands and right now because it's too risky to take the trade. And that trade actually was the USO here. The USO was a great trade. We called it out right here at the high. Look at this. Double top. And we talked about the short. Look at that drop right there on that. And again, that's a call that goes out. We talk about this trend line analysis and price pattern and time stuff on the nightly videos and really teach it hardcore while giving guidance. So again, join the research center to get the full amount of everything you can learn. I just want to show you on an intraday basis what we do. But nonetheless, that was really all you want to do today. And look at the drop that's happened off of that on oil, folks. A beautiful pullback on oil. Beautiful little tick down. We talked about that possibility on the research center video last night, as well as a possible pause day today. Nailing that again very much. So going back to the spiders, folks, before we end this video, I want to make sure you guys are fully aware of all the levels on the intraday. So any of you guys that want to pay attention during the afternoon, you can really look at. So you have a slightly negative pattern, but you don't want to um, go with this right now. Okay, You don't necessarily want to go trade with pattern today because the volume is not heavy enough. What you want to do here is you have resistance at 93.5. A breakout above that could send us a little higher. If you break the 50, you're going to go test a minor level here at, at 92.90. Uh, just below that 93 level. Below that, 92.65 would be another level. Notice the consolidation showing us a good support level right here before it broke out yesterday. That will be a same level right here today as support. On the downside, this pivot low right here will be a minor level. That comes in at 92 and a quarter on the SPY. Then gap window is going to be a major level at 91.65. And then ultimately gap fill down here at 90.65, a dollar lower right there on the SPY. Below that, if you have a breakdown, and this you can use for the coming days, the 200 moving average would be very, very key as a bouncing opportunity. All right, so watch these levels. 60 minute chart. Check this out, guys. See this high pivot right here? How you knew the market was going to stall here, and we had a figure in our heads that we probably wouldn't rally too much more today, if at all, if not come down. Because if you look at this, look at the pivot high on 7.1 right there. And also, if you go back, 
you can see, guys, coming all the way back to this pivot, going back to 616, June 16th. This is just giving you examples about what you have to be looking for in these charts. Again, join the Research Center. We'd love to have you. In addition, we hope to have you in the chat room if you're a trader. Otherwise, we'll talk to you tomorrow. Take care.